The MiG-23 MF was the top air reward for Operation Winter 2021, finally giving Germany access to a plane with a look-down, shoot-down capable radar and medium-range semi-active radar homing missiles. The plane was spammed out heavily once people got access to it, causing German teams to get stomped pretty hard. It took a little while, but now that the spam has finally died down, we're going to dive in and see what this plane is actually capable of. The MiG-23MF is an export variant of the MiG-23M. The plane came in two main subversions. The first, 2311A, was virtually indistinguishable from the original MiG-23M with only the communications and IFF equipment being different. This subversion was meant for export to Warsaw Pact states like East Germany. The second subvariant, 2311B, differed heavily from the original MiG-23M. This subvariant had a downgraded radar that lacked some of the ECCM features found on the Russian variant and had different communications equipment. This variant was meant for third world client states like Syria, Cuba, and India. The Luftstreit Kräfte der Nationalen Volksarmee, or LSK for short, began receiving MiG-23 MFs in 1978. It would use them to replace older MiG-17s and the 23 would be mainly used in the interception role. It didn't replace the MiG-21 as those planes were better dogfighters, more reliable, and cheaper to operate. The first regiment to be equipped with the MiG-23 MF was the 2nd Regiment of JG-9 based out of Pinamunde Air Base. Pilots had mixed feelings about the 23 at first. While many missed the maneuverability and reliability of the MiG-21, they all appreciated the lower landing speed and advanced avionics, especially the IRST. One day in the 1980s, two MiG-23s managed to sneak up behind a Danish F-16 through the clouds using their IRST before briefly locking him up with the radar from close range. The F-16 pilot probably needed a new pair of pants after this encounter. The MF would go on to serve with JG-9 all the way until German reunification in 1990. The MiG-23 MF is equipped with a Sapphire 23D and TP-23 radar IRST combo. The radar has IFF, BVR, and lookdown capabilities. It uses three search modes, MTI, LD, and search. MTI, or moving target indication, is your only mode that will filter out ground clutter and chaff. It does this by storing the returns from the first pulse in a buffer, and when the second pulse returns, the radar then compares the two. Only returns that moved are displayed, while any returns that did not move are filtered out. LD, or look down, is a regular pulse search mode that orientates the radar to look below the gun crosshair. Search is a regular pulse search mode that orientates the radar to look above the gun crosshair. You can use the Change Radar IRST Search Mode keybind to toggle between Search and either MTI or LD. MTI and LD are paired together and your plane will automatically switch between the two depending on your altitude. MTI is active between ground level and 6,000 feet, while LD is active from 6,000 feet and up. The radar has three range settings, 19, 37, and 56 miles. MTI is only able to use the 19 mile range setting with a 60 by 5 degree search setting and lacks IFF. LD and search can use all three range settings with either a 60 by 9 or 60 by 13 degree search setting, and they do have IFF. If you use the switch between radar and IRST keybind, you can swap from your radar to the TP23 infrared search and track system. The IRST can be used to lock onto the heat signatures of any plane without alerting their RWR. You can then slave an IR missile onto this lock. This allows you to launch a missile without letting your target know they're being fired on. For defensive avionics, the MiG-23MF gets access to a flare and shaft pod as a rank 1 modification. This will give you a whopping 12 flares, so you need to use these sparingly. While these are the larger Russian flares, you'll quickly run out if you're getting shot at a lot. For your RWR, you have the SPO-10. This is a primitive RWR that uses lights in one or two corners to indicate the direction you are being locked from within a 45 degree arc. For ballistics computers, you get access to CCIP for only your guns and rockets. 
For air to ground ordnance, the MF gets access to the FAB series of dumb bombs, S5K and S24 unguided rockets, and the KH-23M M-Class guided air to ground missile. The bombs are pretty useless as you can't carry enough to kill a base, and you don't get a ballistics computer for them. The S5Ks aren't much better as they have pretty pitiful penetration. The S24s and KH-23M aren't bad options for CAS. While this isn't the best CAS option available for the German tech tree, it's not bad either if you don't have anything else. Currently, the MiG-23 MF has two R3Ss stock. This is an AIM-9B copy, so it's a short-range 10G missile with a cage seeker head. However, Gaijin has recently announced that they will be replacing the loadouts of many top-tier jets when the next set of BR changes goes live. The new stock loadout for the 23MF will be two R13M1s. Currently, the R13M1 is a rank 2 modification. Hopefully this will be moved to rank 1 after the changes so you can get access to the loadout with 4 missiles sooner. The R13M1 is a 20G IR missile with a practical max range of about 1.5 miles and it has an uncaged seeker head. This missile is pretty good with the only downside being the fact that you can't slate it to either your radar or IRST locks. At rank 3 you get access to the R60MK, the export version of the R60M. This is a short range all aspect 30G IR missile and while the missile loves to chase after flares it's still really good. The all aspect lock capability combined with the high agility lets you get kills from some very impressive angles. At rank 4 you get access to the R23 in both SAR and IR versions. This is a Mach 3 medium range 20G missile with a large 20kg warhead. The IR version, the R23T, gets an all aspect lock range of 1.43 miles. It's a little bit better than the R60MK's 1.24 mile lock range, but it can be evaded in head on since it can only pull 20G. Instead, use this missile for longer range side and rear aspect shots. You can launch this missile from 2 to 3 miles behind a target and expect it to get a hit. The missile also isn't as prone to flares as the R60 is, but it can still be flared away as long as the target drops out of afterburner. The R23R is a semi-active radar homing version of the R23. While it lost its spot as one of the best Fox 1 missiles after the Skyflash, E2, and F Sparrows were added, it's still a dangerous missile. The missile gives you a longer front aspect kill range compared to the R23T, and since it's a semi-active radar homing missile, it's immune to flares. When engaging someone in a head-on, you want to launch the missile between 5 to 7 miles. There's about a 2 second delay for the missile to start tracking, so you may need to lead your target before launching to give the missile a better chance of hitting. After you launch the missile, continue holding the lock until the missile hits the target. If the target deploys chaff after you launch the missile, continue to hold the lock as the missile will continue to track most of the time. For the gun, you get the GSH-23L with 200 rounds of ammo and a rate of fire of 3,400 rounds per minute. This will give you a trigger time of 3.5 seconds. The gun can be a little difficult to aim at first, but with some practice you can feel confident that a single burst will generally put your target down. The stock grind at the moment is pretty difficult given you have a terrible stock missile and no good ground ordnance early on. This should change once the R13M1 becomes a stock missile, and at that point you will have a decent stock missile for going after enemy players. For modifications, first off you want to go for the flare modification, then go down the line working between missiles and performance mods focusing on the missiles. Afterwards you can then get the gun and air to ground modifications. The MiG-23 MF is powered by a single Tumansky R29-300 turbojet engine capable of producing 10,490 kg of force in afterburner and 7,950 kg of force dry. This engine is very powerful and can easily push the MiG-23 MF past the sound barrier on the deck with a full weapon load. Just be sure not to exceed Mach 1.28 on the deck if you want to keep your wings. Speaking of the wings, the MF uses a variable geometry wing design. This allows you to have high top speed by sweeping the wings back while still maintaining good low speed handling when the wings are fully swept forward. Having the wings swept forward gives you some fairly good maneuverability. You'll still be outclassed by top dogfighters like the MLD and Viggen, but with some practice you can beat F5Cs and Phantoms. Since this is an event vehicle, this is likely the first jet a lot of people will get access to, let alone a Mach 2 missile equipped jet. 
there's a big learning curve to using this plane, so I'll try to give a few tips on how to use this plane in air battles. What I typically like to do is to side climb a little bit up to around 15,000 feet. Then using my radar in search mode, I'll look for targets that are above me and try to lock them up. I'll then close to within seven to five miles before launching my R23R. If I get launched on as well, I want to offset to one side and wait until the missile is about three miles out, then I'll begin a diving roll. As long as you're supersonic when doing this roll, you will evade the missile. Depending on what your target does, he'll either evade your missile or you'll hit him. If you do miss, don't bother turning for him as this will only make you an easy target. Keep going forward and try to engage the enemies behind the first guy. Once you're through the enemy lines, do a quick check of your six before turning around and looking to help teammates that are in a furball. It may be hard to get a radar lock on people in a furball, so it's best to rely on your R60s and guns for getting kills in this situation. If managing the radar is too difficult, don't feel down as this radar can be very cumbersome. Just use the R23T instead of the R23R and leave the radar in the IRST mode. At the start of the game, let your teammates go in first and then come in after them to try to pick off distracted enemies. If you can, you want to avoid getting sucked into a dogfight through the early and mid game as you have a very limited number of flares, so you want to avoid putting yourself into a position to have a missile shot at you as much as possible. In the late game, if your team has the numbers advantage and y'all are cleaning up the remaining handful of enemies, then it's okay to get into a dogfight if it's a plane you know you can beat. That'll wrap up everything I wanted to cover, so let's go over the pros and cons before ending with my final verdict. Starting off with the pros as usual, the Sapphire 23D is a solid radar for this BR. It has most of the features you want from a top tier radar. The MTI mode is very good and allows you to use the R23R or Slave IR missiles onto target at low level. The 23MF is currently one of the few planes to have all aspect IR missiles, though it's only a matter of time before NATO planes start receiving them as well as Gen 4 has been confirmed to be coming later this year. Until then, it still has an advantage in close range fights. While the low end acceleration is a little slow, the MF has really good high end acceleration. I'm usually at Mach 1.2 or higher by the time I'm shooting enemies with my R23R. Its high rip speed on the deck allows you to outrun most opponents chasing you. Moving over to the cons, though the radar has most of the features you'd want from a top tier one, the one feature that is missing is the ACM mode. Having ACM would make it much easier to lock onto targets at close range. Because of all the keybinds you need to operate this radar, it can become quite cumbersome and you could end up fighting the radar trying to get a lock. ACM could help alleviate some of this, but that wasn't added to the 23's radar until the MLD version. Probably the biggest downside of the MiG-23 MF is its measly 12 flare count. If an enemy starts to chase you, you'll quickly run out of flares trying to dodge their missiles and end up being an easy kill. My final verdict is that the MiG-23 MF finally gives Germany a competitive top tier jet with good radar and missiles. But this plane comes attached with a big learning curve, and that curve only gets bigger when you are new to jets. So if you are new to jets, you may want to skip this plane. Once you do get past the learning curve, you are in for a fun time with this plane. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.